Hey guys, Level Cap here. Today we're going to be doing an update video on Heroes and Generals. Recently their squad update came out, adding a new squad system and a few new cool vehicles. This little guy here is the T20 Consumale. It acts as an armored transport for at least two passengers and then more can actually ride on the benches on the back. It even comes with a secondary machine gun which you can fire from an armored placement. So it's kind of an interesting alternative to say a Jeep. You can drive it around by yourself, park it in valuable locations where you might want say a mounted machine gun and switch to the gunner seat. A lot of people won't actually realize that somebody's in it until it's too late. Alternatively, you can drive around with a friend while they shoot out of it and you drive. I was doing that a bit with Mash Date and we're having a pretty good time. Now, if you're new to Heroes and Generals, there is an interesting little view feature. Uh, when you try and get a third person camera, you have to expose your soldier inside of your vehicle when doing so. So if you wanna be as safe as possible, playing from the first person perspective will keep your armored hatches closed but it'll allow people to sneak up behind you and that will happen a lot with this little armored vehicle so you really have to get it in the ideal locations but chances are eventually a soldier will get in close and start throwing anti-armor grenades on you you can also be shot out of the driver or gunner seat if the window is open now there's a cool new squad system that's been implemented in the game apparently it's going to go through quite a few more changes before it's in its final state but as it is now uh, it allows you to not only just squat up with friends and join games together easily but if you're playing solo it'll sort of auto match you with other squad members and if there's a squad leader who's got the squad ranked up a bit you can add more members to the squad and you can even add players of different types so say I joined an infantry only squad but the squad leader had uh, enough upgrades we could add uh, an armor user to that squad and start communicating with the armor user or maybe a paratrooper and communicate with the paratrooper as they parachute in behind enemy lines so um, it's a good addition to the game it's something that I think the game's needed for a long time and it also adds squad orders which I think are great because now new players who don't really know what's going on and they just hop into a squad they can look and see and it says attack above certain icons or defend above certain icons given that your squad leader has given those orders. You also get points for completing those orders and likewise the squad leader will get points if uh, the squad members complete those orders. So it's just a nice addition to the game and it can absolutely serve as some very good direction for new players. And although I wasn't able to test out mixing armor users and infantry users in the same squad, I imagine when there's more squad leaders with those upgrades and abilities it's going to be a much more interesting and dynamic game. Just just like in real warfare when moving into urban environments, tanks will not survive on their own. They absolutely need to communicate and work together with infantry and that's much easier to do when they're all in the same squad because then you can directly talk to your tank and say, hey, we need support out in this big open area. Can you take out that tank at distance or can you hit that sniper out of that tower? Or if you're in a city, the tank driver can actually be like, hey, there's a lot of infantry around these buildings. Can you guys scout it out before I proceed down this road? Now, in my previous Heroes and Generals videos, I played almost exclusively as the US. It does make a lot of sense to sort of focus on one or two soldiers to upgrade them as fast as possible. But uh, I've kitted out a Russian soldier here, and he's got some really awesome weapons. I actually really like the setup. This one here has the SVT-40 semi-automatic rifle with a scope. It's an excellent sort of a DMR type sniper and then as backup I've also got a bazooka so this class is great for big wide open maps that even have armor on them I'm a threat to infantry and armor and I was absolutely tearing it up with this setup in one of the previous updates they added a very small close quarter infantry focused map but a lot of the maps here are sort of very big objective oriented lots of forests lots of open fields and stuff like that um, so having good long-range weapons is absolutely essential essential for those types of game modes and I think I've really sort of found my calling here. It's not necessarily the best building clearing setup. You can do it but um, you'd be better off with maybe an SMG or a machine gun or something for just uh, running and gunning inside of buildings but this one is great for getting up in maybe uh, lofts of barns, sniping from there, moving through forests or uh, wheat fields or something like that, hiding behind haystacks and just 
getting those headshots. It's such a fun class, and I absolutely love the way that they render the magnified optics in this game. It doesn't really have that non-magnified effect outside of the scope, but they blur it to the point where it actually looks really realistic, and I certainly appreciate that. Generally speaking, when games do the dual rendering of non-magnified and magnified in the scope, it's a huge performance hindrance, but speaking of performance, the latest update has also done a big performance improvement, and I have to say the game has been running incredibly smoothly. They've also added some cool new effects you'll notice when you're shooting walls and buildings or wood or whatever. There's uh, more bullet holes and more smoke and debris that flies out from it. So it just looks a little bit more realistic overall in the middle of intense combat. Now I did a bunch of gaming with MASH State and we were running around working together as a team and random people would join our squad and that was kind of cool to see. And then I did a bunch of gaming solo just by myself testing out the new squad system. And one interesting thing about it is that um, when you get put in a squad, when you join a game and then that game ends, it'll leave you in that same squad and everybody in that squad can sort of ready up and be ready for the next battle. Or you can leave the squad and just sort of play at your own leisure again and join a different one in the next game you choose to play in. But what's kind of cool about that is that it allows you to make friends with whoever you're playing with at that time. So if you have good teamwork going on, a good team dynamic, and you want to stay with that squad or stick with them for a few more games, you absolutely can do that. And it's a great system for building friends. Now it's nice to see that Heroes and Generals developers are constantly moving forward with this game. At the moment, it's really the only modern World War II shooter out there. And I mean modern in the sense that it's come out recently. It's probably the most recent and the biggest World War II shooter game on the market right now. So if you need that World War II fix and you want vehicles and infantry and airplanes and all that stuff mixed into one, well, this is where it's at, Heroes and Generals. So it's nice to see that they haven't just come out with it and been like, all right, it's good, let's move on to the next thing they're sticking with it they're doing updates and the fact that they're going to update the squad system even further to make it better and more inviting and all that stuff is really exciting because um that i think will be one of the the bigger selling factors of this game is being able to not only play with friends easily but make new friends easily and make more dynamic and interesting squads definitely looking forward to checking out the future updates and if you haven't checked out heroes and generals before you can download it on heroesandgenerals.com for free or on steam it is a free to play game. Anyway, that wraps it up for this update video. Let me know in the comments if you've played Heroes and Generals yet and what you think of it. As always guys, thanks for watching and I'll see you next time. This is Level Cap signing off.